Hey everybody, it's Brad. And I'm Krista. With the Big Family Homestead. And today we figured we would share with you a really cool gadget that we've been that we've been blessed with, and that's our surge milker. Yeah. That's right, our surge milker. It has been, or it has been rather, a huge blessing. Time saver. Yes. Although I am a little bit skeptical on just how much time it really saves because of all the cleanup time. Yeah. But, saves the hands. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And uh, we wanted to share with you this device because it's super cool. And um, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna just kind of ask you questions as we go, Mama, because there's there's what three main parts to the system. You've got this, you got the pulsator, and then the the pump. Four main parts because you have to put some milk in something. Okay, we'll start off. What right. is what do we got here? Four main parts. We'll start with the tank. The tank holds about three gallons of milk at a time, maybe four, I'm not exactly sure. We've never milked that much into it. Because um, we only have one cow. Right, we only have one cow. We generally get about two gallons of milking. Then you have the lid that Whoops. has, oops, I'm throwing stuff, um, that has a rubber gasket in here. Actually, I think this one's made of silicone. Not sure. Newer parts. So, right, so, and then you have the tea cups that are attached with these hoses. This particular hose, this one, the milk comes down from the teat into here, and the milk comes through here into we the We gotta back up, because there's a vacuum involved. Well, yeah, that's Yeah, they can't, they don't know that. They don't know that. That's true. They don't know that. So what this basically is, is you've got a system that has a vacuum. Uh, there's a pump that we'll show you in just a little bit that creates the vacuum and that vacuum goes through this tube from the pump mm -hmm. To this device which is called a pulsator and what this does is it regulates the, the vacuum comes in here and it regulates a piston that goes back and forth that allows suction to go to each one of these cups at a certain amount of pressure at a certain time, so it cycles through. Right. Then what happens is? Well, then it creates the suction on the teat to create a suck and release on that teat so that the milk comes out and then there's a release and then it comes out again. And, and this so thing right here is absolutely crucial to it working properly. Right, well, there's, there's several, this, uh, little ring here and this check valve, those are crucial. You have to have those pieces, otherwise your pulsator will not work. So vacuum, mm -hmm. pulsator, which is kind of think about it like a regulator, mm -hmm. and then those, these get put onto those cups. These, these vacuums. These, yep, these get put onto yeah, this pulsator Yeah, put it on like it would, would be. Like that. From my angle, it's kind of difficult. Ah, here you go. <laughs> Besides, I'm right handed. So then, ultimately, what you have is these cups, the teat cups, get put onto the cow's udders. After blah, the blah, vacuum blah. has been started. Blah, blah, blah. Right. And so, let's pretend like there's udders up there. It's utterly amazing. Then, the suction comes from the pump goes into the pulsator. The pulsator regulates which teat cup gets vacuumed to it. Mm -hmm. And then it gently flows the milk from the, to the, can. right? The can. Now, <laughs> this awesome device has actually been around since just before 1900. Yeah. However, they only got a patent on it in 1921-22? Yep. The Pulsator received a patent in 1921 and the, the, the rest of the machine in 1922. And what's amazing is this technology is in basic form still the same thing that's used today, even in big dairies, except that it's just a much bigger expanded system. Right. And it's a lot easier to be moved. Yeah. 
which is really nice. The oh. milk goes from this to a nut, just a tube and straight into the system. It's really fascinating. And by the way, I always thought that this was a handle here. It kind of is, yes, but it also is because this whole apparatus hangs down below the cow. Yes. There is a belt that goes over the cow's back and this rests on the bottom bar on that belt. And this is this whole system just kind of moves with the cow so that way this doesn't get knocked over. Which hasn't Has actually happened, happened cause she's ornery. So. <laughs> so, well, we're gonna go on outside and show you the pump here. Mm -hmm. uh, but what a cool, interesting machine that saves a lot of time and effort. Yes. Okay, so here is the pump. As you can see, it's a little old, uh, but you know, it works just fine. Uh, they put this uh, pressure gauge on here. I'll show you this in a second. And I'll show you where that vacuum hose hooks into. But this thing just purrs like a kitten. Works great. So here is the pressure gauge. And right down here, that little nipple, that, that part right there, that's where that tube, the uh, vacuum tube, gets plugged into. And then over to the milker and um, well, that's it. It's pretty much not too difficult or complicated of a machine. Now, a word on the pump. You can actually scale your pump up and down and add more of these buckets and vacuum systems. Uh, I don't remember exactly what our Mennonite friend who, um, he actually repaired this, and that's kind of a funny story. We'll come back to that uh, in a sec. But he said that I believe you can run four of these whole systems all at one time just with the pump that we already have. Right. So we could have four cows set up with all of these on them at the same time. We don't need that many cows. This thing really sucks, if you know what I mean. Anyway, so story with our, our Mennonite friend. When we had first heard about the surge milker, this magic surge milker, <laughs> we didn't know anything about what we were talking about. Not at all. We found on Craigslist not that. Yes, this, and the can, and the lid. And that was it. And Well, and these metal pieces. No rubber. The, the rubber was, was really dry. Rotten. It was all dry. And the guy, the guy, what, what we were buying it from, he's like, you know, um, you, do you have your pump yet? And we're like, uh... uh no. No idea. We Don't thought, even know. We thought this just hooked up and it did its business and... That was that. Nope. We were wrong. <laughs> uh, but he said, oh, go down to this place, and there's a welding shop, and and we went there, and, and the guy that owned the welding shop, uh, what, three words to us? he was pretty grumpy. <laughs> and, um, but we're like, well, we'll have to figure it out. Uh, I don't know. So then we decided to go to this restaurant that was nearby that's like a good diner, and as we were driving by, I noticed on the side of the road uh, I was like, wait a minute, isn't that the company that you buy your homeschool materials from? And she goes, no. I said, yeah, 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 you buy the Rod and Staff curriculums, I was like, right? No, they're in Kentucky. I said, we just passed a building that said Rod and Staff and they're book publishers. No way. And I said, yes, yes way. It was. We turned around, came back, and lo and behold, we didn't realize that they have a facility here in Wisconsin. Right, the packaging and shipping facility, it's, and a bookstore. Which was really funny, but then as we're getting ready to leave, Krista goes, you know, this is kind of a weird question, but you guys are Mennonites, and um, you might know somebody who might know something about this. Because they live in the area, and we were new to the area. It seemed natural to us to ask. Right. You know, hey, you guys are book publishers. What do you know about milking machines? <laughs> well, they just so happened to know a guy. <laughs> Which is funny. Right. So they sent us on our way to see Charles and... They were very concerned about Charles's yard, though. Oh, because, yeah, his he yard... Said, he said, Charles, he's kind of eclectic. He, um, he's got a large... He's got a lot of stuff, stuff in his yard. Stuff in his yard. But that and, lot of, that, all that stuff really helped us out. Well, it was just funny because he was trying to be really polite and go, kind of got a lot of junk in the yard. Yeah. 
he was trying to be nice, but he also wanted us to be aware that, hey, you're in the right spot. Right. You're not in the wrong spot. Right, right. And he was trying to just tap dance around it. He was being very polite. Very polite. Yes. So we end up driving and meeting this guy, Charles, mm -hmm. who was just fascinated with us. Oh, yeah. And well, and, and vice versa. We were fascinated with him and his family and what he does for a living. Yeah, and he, I was trying to explain to him that we have this channel, it's like a TV thing, right. but it's on YouTube, right. and people will come and watch us bungle through things like this. And he just kept laughing. Oh, yeah, we were... He thought it was the funniest dang thing ever. Yeah, it was hysterical. And, and so he kept being like, and people watch that. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and we, how do you get paid to do this, is what he said. I said, well, you know, it's kind of like advertisers, like, in a newspaper. Mm -hmm. They pay to be there. Well, people watch our videos, and we get, a, like, a penny or something per... And he's like, really? Yep. That's amazing. He was fascinated with us, too. It was, it was really funny. But, so we get there, and he's awesome, and his family's great. Yeah. And uh, he quickly puts two and two together that we have no, no. idea... What, what this is or what's involved. Right. He overhauled this entire machine. Well, From okay. Scratch. Well, the tank, he didn't have to do anything to the tank, but we needed a new rubber seal, which we got. He needed to replace the leather in the pulsator. He built There's it at, from no, scratch. Well, yeah. yeah the, he had to take this thing apart and replace the parts inside of it that are made of leather, which was fascinating. He replaced the, the hoses. Um, All the then, gaskets. And yeah, and then he um, rebuilt the motor. <laughs> rebuilt and put together a motor for us With so that pump. this would work. It was, it yeah. Was, so it was awesome. And and I'm thinking to myself, oh my gosh, this is going to be like 500 bucks. Because no. I'm looking at this, 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 and that, and that, and that, and it came to like he he was almost embarrassed to ask for 125 dollars. Yeah, it was it was really amazing. I was like. Are you sure this is enough? This seems like a really like a lot of work. Right, and he because he spent that whole afternoon and then the the next day getting it set up, and we came to get it yeah. the next day. Yeah, it was just crazy because he was just like 125, and I was like, yes, please, yes. <laughs> but I was like, I felt bad. I was like, right. are you sure this is enough? Right. But um, so funny story on how we ended up with the surge milker, but I am just amazed at how well it works. Yes. Macy can get milked out within 15 to 20 minutes if she's behaving and letting her milk down. So. Yeah. 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 And, you know, it's expandable. Mm -hmm. And so this is a testament to old school tech mm -hmm. that just plain works. Oh, and right. by the way, that, that sloppy sound you're hearing, it's not Nana. us. It's our dog, Nana. She's right there. She's drinking she's out of a bowl. Drink of water. So I thought I'd mention that so you didn't think there's weird bodily fluid things going on with us. Because it was a sloppy sound. Anyway, oh my goodness. Surge Milker. Um, and actually coming up real soon here. Hey, Nana. Now she wants to put it all over my leg. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> that. Um, we're gonna be doing a we're gonna be doing a collaboration video with some channels. The Texas Boys are starting this thing out, mm -hmm. and their uh, their premise is how do you milk your cow? We have a family cow, right? And uh, well, we're gonna show you how all this comes together and, and uh, show you how we yeah. do it. Mm -hmm. um, gotta speak into the microphone; can't be heard properly. Uh, so be looking for that real soon. But wanted to share with you the actual mechanics on how this was how this was set up. Yeah. yeah. So surge milker for the win. And do we tell why we have to use this machine? Um. Well, that was actually funny too. When we were getting the uh, when we were getting the milker repaired by Charles, his dad came over because his dad was an expert on different parts of this, mm -hmm. and he was baffled with us too. Because he says, well, how many cows do you have? One. And he kind of looks at us like... You're nuts. He says, why do you need a surge milker? <laughs> <laughs> Seeing that, actually, it's snowing like crazy. i got to get out there and, yeah. and plow the driveway. Yeah. So with that, this video has got to come to a close or else we'll be snowed in. Like people who can't get out because there's <laughs> snow in the way. A lot of it this much.
snow. Actually, I think there's probably about three inches, but we're supposed to get more. Yeah, it's supposed to snow most of the day. But you gotta keep it uh, in front of it. So anyway, Surge Milker, there you go. Zamfir. Oh, <laughs> anyway, I'm Brad. I'm Krista. You guys have an amazing day.